Hi, and welcome to this video with me, Sammy. We're taking a look at the Syntec E352. So this is the latest oscillator module from Syntec. It's designed to take over the E340 cloud generator and the E350 morphing terrarium, but it offers more features than both of them combined. We'll be briefly touching on its capabilities as we go through its menu here and take a look at what it has to offer. So starting off with the controls, we have coarse and fine tuning, along with an FM input. Now all the different modes available are mapped to these controls here. That's the effect X, Y, and Z controls. And directly beneath are the attenuators for the CV inputs to modulate those parameters. Over on the right here, we have two separate audio outputs. And then finally, as you can see here, we have sync and one volt per octave inputs as well. So this is the main menu here. So we'll start our tour by taking a look at the first option on the menu, which is settings. So all I need to do is push in the encoder. So this menu is where we can select what mode the E352 operates in, and that in turn will dictate what the X, Y, and Z controls do. So our first mode here is morph. This is very much like the E350 terrarium. However, if we take a look at the bank setting, you can see a new option here, which is the load up user wavetables. So you've got three user banks here and three ROM banks. These are all the wavetables from the morphing terrarium. Now you also have control here of a glitch in three different strengths. This makes stepping through the wavetables quite abrupt. Okay, so on to the next mode, morph plus phase. This gives you control over the phase shifting on output two so that when you mix outputs one and two together and you start modulating the phase, you actually get some really interesting results. Now next is morph plus wavefold. So we now have wavefolding directly in the module. Now I'm actually gonna back up a moment here and come out of this menu and go to a different screen called waves. And from here, we can actually see the effects of wavefolding on the waveform in real time. And a neat workflow enhancement here is that if we just hold the encoder now, it'll take us back to our settings page again, where we choose the different modes of operation. And this is a great mode to experiment with the glitch and phase interpolation settings. Now moving on, the next mode is cloud. This gives you a stack of up to eight oscillators, like the E340. But in the E52, you can access the digital waveforms as well. So in this example, we just select Morph. Then we can select our bank. Then down at the bottom here, we can make our waveform selection. One for each output. So that's really neat. What's even better, however, is the next mode. Cloud plus Morph. So in this mode, you have a stack of eight oscillators, and you can actually sweep through the wavetable at the same time. It sounds really rich. So as we're going to be taking a more in-depth look at all these different modes in future videos, I'm going to switch over now to the next mode, which is the 2-Up FM. This is very similar to the 2-Up FM in the E330, which I already did a video on. However, now we can actually use the Morph Wavetables here as well. Okay, so here again, I want to step out of this mode for a second here and take you to a different screen called Visual Displays. 
This gives us a really neat visual aid here to see what goes on in the FM mode. As I bring up the intensity, you can see the extra harmonics, and as I change the ratio, you can see the different spread. Okay, so moving on to the final mode, we have noise. Now there's actually a few sub-modes in here as well, but the first mode here gives you white noise, plus a digital filter with resonance. So while we're going through the different modes here, it might be a little difficult to remember what each control does. So let's take a look now at some of the alternate display modes available in the menu. So I'm just going to move the cursor down here to exit. And the first display mode we're going to look at is waves. And here we get some nice real-time information on what settings we've chosen in this mode. So you can see me selecting different types of noise here. And you can also see the cutoff settings and resonance. This is really handy so far. We can also expand this. So here we are back at 2UpFM. And if I hold down on the encoder again, it'll take me back to the waves page. And now we can see waveforms. Okay, so let's come out of this and go a few options down to visual displays. And this is a really helpful display that basically visualizes what the mode is all about. So in Cloudmore, for example, you get a visual display of what the spread and chaos controls do. As well as where you are in the wavetable. Here's what this page looks like in morph mode. I'm going to add a bit of modulation here. And you can see how our position in the wavetable is being tracked on the screen. I'm going to hold the encoder. And let's check out the Lisergy waves. Okay, so let's come out of this mode now and go down to the next one, which is eye candy. So there's some interesting visualizations here, just for fun. But your control movements actually affect what's on screen as well. As you can see, I can change the size, speed of rotation, and so on. Now the next option here is File. This will allow you to grab wavetables off your SD card. Now the next page is Frequency Quantization. This is a great feature. It basically allows you to quantize the tuning of your course and find controls, as well as enter in an overall offset and quantize the FM. Now the next menu option is Colors, and this gives you extensive customization over the appearance. I've chosen a black background and white text, it looks good, and it works well for the camera. Okay, so moving down here it takes us to the patches screen. So we actually have eight patch slots available in this module, which we can save to and load from. Now as I alluded to before, when learning the module, it can be difficult to remember what the XYZ controls are assigned to in each mode. So I'm going to go down to the bottom of the menu page here, and there's an option called Mode Help. And this is sort of a mini manual just to give you a quick overview of what is assigned to what in various modes. So it's really helpful and it does save you having to dive into the manual when you just need a refresher when working on the module. The last option down here is About. This is quite handy because it gives you a readout of the status of your different control settings right here. 
as well as letting you know what firmware version you're running. Okay, so that concludes my overview intro to the E352. As you can see, it packs quite a lot into what is essentially quite an easy interface. Now I'll be doing some more in-depth videos on this module soon, so I look forward to seeing you then. Thanks for watching, and take care.